This is part five in a series of videos in which I'm attempting to repair and restore a Kremenko System 3. In the previous videos I got as far as checking out and repairing the power supply and the main chassis. I started refitting the boards and we fitted the uh, Jade bus probe and it uh, started coming to life. But it was apparent that uh, the machine wasn't running properly, there was some issues with the cards. So it was going to need some repairing and so we'll get onto that later in this video. Um, but before I started on that I wanted to do some uh, basic housekeeping on the unit, do some repairs. And it's uh, things like this that you find quite a lot in these old machines. Firstly one of the uh, fuses, the unit kept uh, switching itself off for no apparent reason and uh, looking around it, um, it appeared this fuse had blown, reading across the fuse holder. Um, but it hasn't actually blown, it's um, still intact but um, the glass um, uh, envelope has, uh, has been broken. I think there was some debris in the bottom of the fuse holder when it was fitted and uh, whoever did it just forced it in and it broke. So I've replaced that. Like I said it wasn't um, blown but um, there's no point leaving that in there uh, so I've replaced that. Uh, the main issues however were there are two switches on the back of the unit and this is a common problem in machines of this era. Uh, there's this one which is the main power switch which is an illuminated switch and there's another switch that's identical to this except it has um, uh, a black uh, rocker. Uh, exactly the same type of switch though and these switches all suffer from a common failure and that is this uh, centre boss breaks off the rocker so this bit um, just snaps off and it's loose inside the uh, switch. So when you try to turn the switch on and off the rocker moves uh, but nothing inside uh, happens so you can't turn the switch on or off. Uh, these are very hard to find, uh, very expensive and because I want to try and retain the look of the unit uh, what I normally do is repair these. They're quite easy to repair. Uh, all you have to do is carefully figure out the orientation of the uh, boss, put it into uh, position and then what I do is I run epoxy down both sides and round the base. So it's actually probably a lot stronger now than it was initially. Uh, and what you can then do of course is reassemble it and it's just really a case of putting the plunger back in so when you put the epoxy in it's very important that you don't block this uh, interior hole uh, because of this plunger does not need to be able to slide in and out quite freely. Okay and then once that's clipped into place then the switch should be fully functional again and so I can now refit this to the chassis and we'll carry on looking at the cards and see if we can get them repaired and get the machine to boot up. But uh, maybe a, a long process, but uh, let's get started. Okay, it's several days later. I finished all the mechanical repairs on the chassis, replaced the switches, and we can now get back to looking at the cards. Uh, what I've done so far is had a brief look through the cards that I have fitted here and of course the next thing is I want to try and get this to uh, boot into the um, resident DOS program that's on the um, floppy drive controller. So the way this uh, machine's arranged is we have the processor card, we have the memory card and then we have the floppy drive controller card. Uh, the floppy drive controller card also contains the resident monitor, so that's the RDOS program, uh, and also the bootstrap loader for the floppy drive. It also contains the serial in-out, that's the sort of basic serial in-out um, that we can use to communicate with this machine through a terminal. So I've got those three cards fitted and what I've been doing is working my way through these. Now in the previous video I showed single stepping using the Jade bus probe and we were indeed jumping to the correct um, bootstrap address, uh, the reset address, to try to start the loader in the floppy drive controller card. So that's at C1000. Um, but it was clear that the data I was getting back from the floppy drive controller card was incorrect. And while I was stepping through using the Jade bus probe, I wasn't getting the data values that I was seeing when I read the ROM. Um, so this ROM had failed and this is a replacement ROM so I checked it again and it was fine. 
I do have a spare, or several spare um, cards for this, so I've tried a spare, got a bit further with that, um, but found there was a problem with the RAM card and it turned out just to be a dirty socket on here, so uh, I've cleaned uh, all the sockets on this and that now seems to be working fine. I've uh, tested it in a, um, an S100 test jig that I have. I also popped out all the DRAMs and tested those using uh, my DRAM tester, so which is this, and um, it allows me to test them all fairly thoroughly and they were all working fine. But I'm still getting uh, the wrong values coming back from the card. So I turned my attention to the Z80 card, started looking into that, found a few issues with it, and um, there was a partly failed IC in the clock circuit so the clock was very weak and it was causing intermittent problems and I wasn't getting a very good uh, signal on the back plane. Uh, so I corrected that but it still wasn't working right and it turned out it was a failing Z80. The uh, in-out bus was um, giving very poor signals and um, they just weren't strong enough to drive the rest of the system. So I fitted a new Z80 and the way I currently have this configured is I've got it switched to 2 MHz. I've got the memory card fitted. Don't have the floppy drive controller cable fitted or, or connected because the floppy drive is not installed of course. What I'm doing here is just trying to boot to RDOS which is the resident um, program that's on the floppy drive controller card. I've tried this with the original card that came with it and it doesn't work. And what I did is spent quite a lot of time with the logic analyzer connected. It's quite a nice machine for doing this because you can move the card right to the front and then connect through the uh, aperture at the front. So I connected the Z80 to the logic analyzer and then started single stepping or, or doing what I normally do. You've seen me do in previous videos of running the machine and then capturing data and seeing what's going on and uh, it was clear that there was a fault on the original floppy drive controller card. So I swapped it out with a spare one that I have and we'll now try and boot to this one. The way I've got the uh, cards configured is it's going to try to boot to the RDOS program or monitor I should say within the floppy drive controller card it's not going to try and boot to CDOS which is the program that would normally reside on the floppy drive. So we should get uh, RDOS coming up and I'm going to connect it to Hyperterminal using the um, serial interface. So the way I've got this uh, set up is this goes straight through to my LAN PC. I've got the LAN PC running Hyperterminal and it's set up for nominal serial communications uh, using the specification for the Kremenko System 3. It's not exactly right, so I won't get um, perfect communications, but it should be good enough to get the system running if it's capable of running at all. So we'll try and boot this up. So the way to boot this is you um, power up the machine with the terminal running, and then you hit enter or a key on the terminal a few times. And the reason for doing that is the initial part of the code in the RDOS initializes the UART on the floppy drive controller card, uh, but then it looks for incoming data, and when it gets incoming data, it sets the board rate to match the incoming data, kind of an auto board, but it requires some data to come in before the boot process will really complete on the, um, in the RDOS system. If it works correctly and it gets through that step, then it will return the boot up message to the terminal program through the serial port. So in other words, we power this up, hit enter a few times on the terminal, and then if all goes well, and I've uh, so far fixed any existing problems, then we should see uh, the message being returned saying what version of RDOS we're running. Um, it's an older version on this card, this is quite an old card, so I think it's version 1.1 I've got on here. Um, looking at the Jade bus, um, it is clear we're jumping to the correct address, so it is jumping and running within the uh, C1000 loop, um, but we'll see how things go, and um, I'll bring the 
a terminal program up in the corner as usual. Try booting up the machine and we'll see uh, how we get on. Okay, so as we can see, we've got um, the resident monitor actually running. So that's the monitor running from the ROM on this card. Um, and it's stunned quite a lot here. It's um, gone through, loaded the um, program from the um, ROM. It's got it running and it's also initialized the UART and it does prove that uh, quite a lot of the system is running. Looking at the indication on the Jade bus, it's also clear that the system is running to a large degree. I'll just move the camera so that you can see that. So, as you can see, the system does appear to be running. And uh, what we can do now is, uh, in theory at least, issue some commands through the uh, resident monitor to see if the system is capable of running at all. I would say at this point I don't have the in-out card fitted. I don't need that for this part of the system testing. But what I want to do now is get um, the original uh, card running. Um, this is the card that uh, belongs to the unit. And so I want to go through and see if I can repair this. And uh, then see if we can boot from this. I think I know what's wrong with it. So I think one of the uh, buffer devices isn't working. And the reason I think that is I've looked at it through a thermal camera. And one of the uh, buffers is getting extremely hot. So uh, I think there's an issue with that. I also think the UART chip may have failed as well, so uh, I'll try those, I'll do it off camera, I don't want to bore you with the uh, details, it's just really going to be uh, swapping out the, the device that's getting hot and see if the new one works and then we'll try a, a replacement UART and I'll do a, a few quick tests with a scope and see if that resolves it and if it does I'll swap it out and we'll try and boot from that card. Okay, I've been through the cards, carried out a few repairs. We had, uh, as expected, one failed buffer chip. The UART had failed, and I did find another device that had failed as well. So I've replaced those, and we'll now try rebooting the machine. And uh, I'll hit enter on the terminal a few times and see if um, the system will boot with its own floppy drive controller card. So as you can see, it's successfully booted into the resident monitor using its own card. So this is looking quite promising as far as the current configuration is concerned. Uh, what we can do now is start looking at issuing commands from the resident monitor to see how well the system is working. Um, but I'll do that in the next video. I want to carry out a few more checks before I start um, leaving it running for too long and uh, so we've made some progress we've got it to boot into the resident monitor we'll do some more testing in the next video we'll try making use of the resident monitor carrying out a few tests using that and if that all goes well then we'll try fitting the floppy drive and see if we can get it to boot into the proper operating system